G'day guys and welcome back to another Wednesday night. Sorry for the bit of a time difference this week but Daylight Savings has finished so here in Queensland and uh, a couple other states the times have changed so this in Queensland it, it will now be 7.30 over the winter periods yeah, but it'll be the same in the other states of course so sorry about the mix up tonight uh, but we're all on track now. So before we start give this video a thumbs up. It's good to see we already got a few thumbs up, but uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, which will be really good. And you can find us on all the social media networks, all the uh, Facebook and Instagram and all that sort of stuff. And also you can sign up to the Patreon to support the channel, which would be really appreciated. So all the links in the description for Jason and mine uh channels so we'll just uh bring in old jason here you go jason how are you what's going on interesting night it's been a yeah been we're already up to some week. good numbers up to some good numbers already yeah good oh, i know yeah. got it wrong the 6 30 i messaged him and we <laughs> or wonder why so many people are on but as usual he got something wrong so what do you do? Yeah. We'll continue, and then we're here at 7.30, so we're all back to the same time frame, which is uh, fantastic, and we've got a lot of people in the chat, which is which is really good. It's building up week in after week, so it's great. Yeah, I was on the phone while you were having um, a texting meltdown to me. <laughs> yeah, no, well, just, it was just uh, it was just pissing down, like it was bucketing down for about 20 minutes, and then I was watching a bit of YouTube downstairs, so it got pretty crazy, and it got really slow, and then it started spinning and buffering, and I thought, oh, no, typical um, before, you know, someone's saying can't hear anything, conservative sniper, can't hear anything, no, everything look okay from our end. Sorry, guys, okay. let us know in the comment. Maybe it's your one, conservative sniper. No one said anything just yet. Uh, so yeah. let us know in the comments if you can actually hear us. I think we can. Yeah, uh, but everything's saying it's all good at, good at this end. All right, that's uh, good. Sorry, conservative sniper. Must be him, in fact. Maybe check your uh, settings there. But, yeah, I went on a hunting trip over the weekend, and it was interesting. Um, it was a forest we've been to before. A couple of the good ones we used to have were, were burnt out. Uh, none of us got anything but got honked by a couple of samba, saw a couple, couple of fallows, saw a few more samba. Yeah, it was a good weekend, man. Just getting away. I was actually surprised how, how um, sorry, Aaron's got a phone call there. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised how hot it was during the day for for April. It was it was pretty hot. It was like, and when I say twenty eight, twenty nine, when you're up pretty high, that sun definitely has a lot more sting into it. I was about, I think about seven or eight of us or something like that, and yeah, it was a pretty good weekend out camping. And then when nighttime came, it really. It wasn't crazy cold or anything like that because it's only April, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's certainly starting to get dewy again, and uh, you know, or waking up in the morning and pretty much everything's wet, so you got to put everything away and you know, stuff like that. So yeah, it was a good weekend, man. Just hanging out with the boys, having a laugh. I don't think I've laughed this hard in in pretty much forever. So it was a really really good weekend and good being in the pines and trying to hunt and yeah. What have you been up to? What have you been up to anyway? Oh, well, dude, the rain has not stopped here. Uh, my property is just an absolute mud pit. Um, uh, I couldn't even go up. I've got a new shotgun, so we don't do another world's first um, review on the shotgun, and it's actually legal in New South Wales, but I couldn't even get out. Uh, there's no way, and, I, and I'd be surprised if it's going to be dry enough to get out there because you can't be racing around um, a working dairy farm's paddock and just churning them all up with mud. So... Yeah, I'm going to try and get out this weekend, but it's not looking hopeful because it has only just stopped raining not long ago, actually, a couple of hours ago. So it's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty bad here. So the whole weekend couldn't do anything, basically just, uh, yeah, just sat around home and, um, and just mucked around. That's, that was about it. Yeah, no, it's been pretty wet. This is the first day it's been wet since I got back, but, yeah, it was bucketing down. So hopefully uh, that stops. And, I mean, I guess it's good for everything else, the, the lawns and, you know, the stuff like that. But, uh, oh, custard the pipe cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I haven't seen you here before. I, I, I'm sorry if I haven't seen you before, but thank you very much for the $5 donation. Remember, guys, if you uh, support the show by the Super Chats, we will read your messages out as long as they're not too offensive. Uh, we will do it. So thank you very much. Everything goes towards the ammo um, fund for making more fun videos once the rain stops eventually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing worse when when you're out hunting and it's just it's pissing down for days on end. It just puts your spirits down. 
you know, I've been I've been on hunts like that, and it's even worse when it's like places where it's winter and it's super cold. Uh, luckily, luckily on one trip I did have my uh, not many people know about them, but the diesel heater. So I run like a diesel heater, and mate, luckily that was just pumping into the tent and oh man it was just beautiful it warmed everything up it's a dry heat so there was everything felt dry you know when you've been away in mud and oh, it was horrible but uh anyway so welcome back everybody we've got who we got let's go through a few Aaron yeah. Rex. we've got joseph sherman we've got retro 8477 our buddy colin penfold of course the super chatter custard the pie cat, pie cat. um who else we got liam cumbo he's a regular as well andy one two three four triple seven aka daniel andrews is back again for another stream uh he's mm -hmm. still recovering from his uh his sore back so that's good uh learning, buddy to, learning to walk apparently <laughs> yeah bennett hamilton haven't seen bennett hamilton so hello bennett hamilton conservative sniper of course aaron johnson who else we got jimmy ricard sorry jimmy if we haven't seen you before but uh yeah, Tube User C1, welcome. I haven't seen you before. If we have, I'm sorry. Uh, Bagara Operator, of course, our buddy there, Master Blaster. We've got Ben Taz. We've got oh, Tech Support from the Tech Support Call Center. He's back again. Well, welcome back, Tech Support. Downrange Threads, haven't seen you before, mate. Welcome. Matt Rumsey's a regular. Tactical Bacon, Dave Webb, uh, Snake the Peg. We've also got, who else we got? Shit, JSO AR15 uh, back. Bennett um, Hamilton, haven't seen Bennett before. Uh, welcome, I just, Bennett. I just mentioned Bennett. Obviously, you tuned mm. out. Obviously, very disappointing <laughs> again. Oh, uh, just uh, when you start when you start talking, it just white noise. <laughs> <laughs> Down, uh, uh, Trevor Will, Ryan Anderson, Michael Montanari, uh, Nick Blackwell, Harps Triple Six, of course, cut the regulars there too. Uh, National Shooting Council. We've got uh, sorry, there's so many of you guys trying to end salty. Welcome back, Salty. Stan Mance we, uh, Stan's one of our regulars. Of course, Rod Sweet, so he's one of our regulars as well. Ryan Anderson. Oh, man, there's so many here. Rob's Woodworking, of course. He's a regular as well. Yeah. God, there's so yeah, many. I was, just, um, Sorry. I was just talking to Rob's wood, Woodworking today on the phone, so uh, I forgot to ask him if he has a website and will promote his website so you guys can have a look at him. He's a really nice guy, a, um, a farmer and uh, – yeah, shooter, and uh, Andy makes uh, really nice gear and uh, sells sells it out of wood. So, yep. Yeah, so, Rob, uh, get hold of me if you do have a website, and I'll just put it up for you. Uh, very nice yeah. guy. Always a pleasure to talk to. Yeah, we've got Happy Hunter. He's a regular. Victorian Outdoors Adventures, another regular. Yeah, we've got Heath, Arto540. Sorry, I've never seen you before, but welcome. Yeah, it's mate, building, building every week. Lots of new people, lots of old faces, like a bloody family. It's like the kids yeah. I never had. <laughs> yeah, so guys, uh, get on and tell all your friends and family to log on and start watching this show, and we will get these numbers up. And we are up to good numbers already, so we should hopefully once again push over the thousand viewers in the night. So here we got our good friend Chris Miller, MO Fund. Thank you very much, uh, Chris, for the twenty-two bucks. That is awesome. Yeah, that's and, really uh, good. We're going to hunt deer from his doorstep one day, aren't we, Chris? We definitely are, and you, yeah, you, don't, well, have, you, don't, you don't have a choice in the matter, unfortunately. So, <laughs> yeah, once the once the China flu goes, yep, it'd be yeah. all on. Yeah, we've got a few that's more good. too. Epic Flyer eight eight nine. Ret, uh, we already said retro. Benny eight eight one, and and Big Toe. Never seen you guys before, so welcome to the stream. Um, yes, man, there's so many, so many good. If I've missed anyone, I do apologize. These things are coming in thick and fast. And uh, Luke Warms, another one. Hi, Luke. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Yeah, it is good. It is fantastic. And uh, now um, I just got off the phone with Ashley, who runs this website. We promoted him a few weeks ago. He was nice enough to send us a few of these, these T-shirts. Jason was wearing them in his videos over the weekend um, out hunting. And, uh, yeah, got a very nice – talked to him on the phone, got a nice phone call, bring up his – there's his website. So if you go there, you get 20% off your uh, first order. He makes awesome shirts. He's got hoodies and hats coming out. And uh, he said after we promoted him for that one time, his sales jumped up and he, they actually came from the YouTube channel – came from you guys watching it. So I've put his link again down in the uh, description. So you can click onto his website and have a look at his gear. Good pricing on his shirts and extremely nice guy. Uh, a young hunter and shooter, excuse me, here in Brisbane. 
and uh, so go over and and support him, which would be fantastic. And yeah. if you do have a business in um, Australia or can be overseas, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we would want to, and you're a shooter. Let us know, get hold of us, and we are happy to uh, support you and uh, give yeah. you a plug and talk about your business. We're here to help you out. I've actually, <clears throat> didn't tell you, Jason, been doing a job, my business, um, uh, for a, a guy, and he's a returned vet. And so um, whenever I get a veteran, I uh, give him uh, basically below mates rates prices to help them out. This guy... Uh, yeah, was an extremely nice guy, a bit of a hard time. Um, they've been fighting overseas and, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, helping him out, uh, redoing up his house that needed, needed doing up. So it's always nice to help our vets. And it's a shame uh, you don't really hear many channels, especially over here, uh, helping our return veterans out or talking about them, which is a real shame because, uh, yep, that's uh, something uh, my whole family uh, has been in the, the armed services and that. A lot of my family has anyway, and uh, that's something that's really close to my heart. So I always try and help the vets out as well and definitely the shooters. So go and have a look at his um, page and see if there's anything there you like. They're, they're great shirts. Yeah, they are. I was uh, I was wearing mine on the weekend. I think I had the black one on, which was not good in that hot day weather. It was just crazy warm. Uh, you know, when you got that elevation, the sun stings. And I think I was wearing my recoil shirt for like <laughs> three days, the black one. And I was like, why did I wear the black one? I just, you know what? I just couldn't be bothered to get into my, you know, camo hunting shirt. And I just said, oh, mate, I just turned up. I had my camo long pants on, my boots. Uh, and then just pretty much just went out in the bush, put my uh, bino harness on my backpack, camera on, and let's go. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a good weekend. And then on the way home, I wore the um, sandy color, the khaki one, on the way home. So probably should have uh, you know put it this way. The reason I'm not wearing them now is because they they're, in, <laughs> they're on the hanging shelf drying out <laughs> because you know I wore them both all weekend. But yeah, they're good products. They feel good. Um, you know, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. And you know, support people that support us here at the show. And, you know, we, we love helping out the small businesses and stuff like that. And, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so, guys, if you have a business, make sure you get hold of us. Um, give us a call uh, uh, through uh, uh, Instagram is probably the easiest way of getting hold of me. I check my Instagram post um, messages uh, mostly, so that's probably the easiest way. You can find us on Instagram. The links are down below. Send us a message on that. And uh, we can start talking and, uh, yeah, more than happy to push your products, which would be fantastic. Yeah. Peter said, uh, have I spoken about my hunting trip? Yes, yes. I was unsuccessful, mate, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing, you know, when you've got access to some private property, most people, as they know, you can't take eight, nine guys that you know hunting. And, you know, for, I always said this to Aaron as well, and he might disagree a little bit, but for me it's 50% hunting and 50% hanging out with my mates, you know what I mean? Like I love coming back and we get around the fire when we love it. It was the best weekend. And, you know, that means I don't shoot anything because I go to a state forest. Well, that means I don't shoot anything. So, I mean, if anyone lives in Sydney or outside Sydney and you've got a deer property or pigs you can invite me to, hey, just send me an inbox. I'm more than happy to take uh, up those offers. But, you know, again, it's hard to, when you do have access to, say, a private property, you know, to take you know, seven or eight, nine, ten guys with you onto a hunting property. It's not really something that goes down well. You might be able to crack one or two, but, you know, even then you might not be lucky to get that many. So, you know, for no, exactly. me, it's me for more hanging out with mates and we sit around the campfire talking shit, go for some, you know, I normally go out four or five hours in the morning um, you know, to about one o'clock, 12 o'clock, come back, grab some lunch, have a bit of a break for a couple of hours at camp and then head back out for, you know, it's only two and a half hours in the afternoon just before the sun goes down. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good time. It's a good time. But, uh, if anyone, I want to, I want to shoot some pigs. I did shoot one a couple of weeks ago on that rabbit farm and, uh, the bastard got into the blackberry though. So I'm not really happy about that, but you know, what do you do? We'll, we'll live to fight another day. Yes, exactly. And, um, oh, wow. did some does sound like a great uh, trip you had. Uh, yep, Overland 4x4, thank you very much for the $79 uh, super chat. More funds for the ammo. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, you guys are keep keeping my head above water with all the costs of running the show, which is great. So thank you very, very much. Basically, what I do is I um, match any donations I get uh, to go towards the videos. Uh, I spent... 
Uh, we talked about all this before. I get asked all the time. We might do a whole show on YouTube, actually, and uh, bust some myths and and what other people are lying about. And, uh, yeah, we'll bust all those and actually tell you the truth about stuff. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it uh, costs a lot. I've spent about 30 to 40 grand of my own money over eight years doing this stuff. So it was a bit of a kick in the guts when the channel went down last year. So, But, uh, yeah, we rebuilt it and, yep, and the loyal viewers have come back, which is good. I think I'd like, uh, I don't know, it's a hard thing, isn't it, Jason, about uh, view, uh, your, your subscribers. Uh, is it good to have tons of subscribers, but they never watch your show or have uh, less subscribers, but they all watch and enjoy your show? It's sort of, uh, for me, uh, yeah. I'd want people. I'm more. I'd much rather people watching the show than anything else. It's not all about. I oh, look how many you know feeding an ego because I don't have an ego like that. But feeding an ego, saying look how many subscribers I got. Yeah, but only um two percent of them actually watch your uh, content. Yeah, I was watching one of the one of these gun channels the other day in the US, and like, is I can't. I can't for the life of me. I'm going to go to my history and have a look, but. You know, I think he had like fifteen thousand subscribers. Was was getting about, you know, like if you're getting about twenty, if you're getting twenty five percent of your subscriber base watching, that's generally pretty good. You know, what I mean, generally. But uh, you know, this guy is getting like forty five, sixty five thousand, eighty five. I thought, wow, he's getting like four hundred percent return on his subscriber base, which is which is awesome. And that that that's the ultimate, really. That's what you really want to happen. But, uh, you know, sometimes that's not always possible depending on the content, whether, you know, someone's going to be interested in watching, you know, that particular, like you, you're in reviews. We said this last week, whether they're, they're interested in watching that particular gun. Like I, I watch it because I'm your mate, but at the end of the day, someone might go, nah, I don't like that. That gun's too expensive or that's too cheap or I'm not in the market for that gun. So people sometimes, you know, just disregard certain things. You know, based on the the content that's being put put it up. That's why I said we should get back to fun and you know just having a good time, exciting and, and shooting and just having a good time with firearms because I think that's what it's all about. So, yeah, well, that's well as we said last week, the reviews are finished now. Apart from the old one when someone sends me a gun, and of course, uh, here's a funny thing uh, we talked about the other day, Jason. Um, I only review when someone sends me a gun, and I've talked to them, and they realise that it's um going to be a 100% honest review. So the amount of time I've had people phone me, oh, we want to review my gun I'm making here in Australia. Or do you want to look at this gun? Yep, not a problem, mate, but it will be, uh, unlike uh, a lot of channels out there, it will be 100% honest. You may be sending me the gun but and the ammo, but I will be giving you an honest review. Basically, within a minute, the phone call's finished, and about a month later, you see their gun pop up on another channel. You go, oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, they don't want you doing an honest review on their gun. So, yeah, so pretty much every time I say that, most of these gun makers just uh, hang up the phone or just get yeah, into call pretty fast when you tell them it's going to, doesn't matter what it happens, it's just going to be honest about the gun. So, yeah, yeah. I don't seem to like that. And I don't really care anymore, to be to be quite um, honest with you. it's um, I'm not going to bullshit people about the guns. If it's a crap gun, I'm just going to say it. Yeah, this guy, someone fancy said, Aaron, he's got <laughs> four or five old laptops that need destroying. He's in Brisbane. Let me know if you want to shoot them. He goes, oh, I'll just do Get it myself. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, we'll catch up for a beer. And, um, yeah, for sure. Get hold of me on Instagram, mate. Get hold of me on Instagram. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll organize that. We'll uh, catch up. And, uh, yeah, definitely I'll do that for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I've always said since you're making videos, like I just couldn't do what you do. I just couldn't get into any sort of review. Like sometimes I make the odd thing about guns that I own, but I wouldn't go out of my way to be getting guns to do reviews because, like I said, it's it's, it's a diminishing market. If you say one bad thing about one product and basically you're dead to that importer or that company, uh, you know, and if you've got a lot of subscribers, you know, a lot of people have got a lot of pull in the industry based on their YouTube channel, especially a lot of the you know, really big guys. You know, you say something bad about a product, I mean, you know, that, that sends ripples through the company, you know, so, you know, of, of lost revenue, whatever it may be about selling. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I guess in Australia, it hasn't really caught on in regards to, you know, importers or companies supporting online content like podcasts, like videos and that sort of thing. And, you know, it's kind of disappointing, really. It's kind of disappointing because, you know, that's why I keep getting surprised with people out there. And we, I think we was talking about this a couple of weeks ago. People are like, you know, just, just you know, 
shilling for all these companies with with nothing in return really like saying like yeah putting up all these products they've got and you know tagging the companies i mean that they love people like you because that you're doing free advertising for them so it's like i don't yeah. really do that, that often unless i really like something you know i don't tend to do that you know what i mean because it's just you know and who cares what i think anyway but at the end of the day it's just i think you know the People need to start throwing content and money behind, you know, to keep things like this going and keep you know, other channels out there going and other podcasts that not just are mine but other people's as well. And I just think, well, exactly. I'd really like to see that compared to the US. It's really is a lot different. So, oh, it is. When I talk to other YouTubers over there, it's uh, especially in the US, as everyone knows, I've been on a few of the shows over there. We've got a few of them coming on our show soon, and we're going to get Hootie back again. Um, mm. Mm. So we've got a yeah, like uh, hopefully next week we got someone from um, England coming on. So it'll be very interesting. Hopefully, if that all works out, he'll be coming on, and that's going to be an eye opener. Uh, we think our gun laws are bad. Yep, they got. Um, I don't know. Uh, most cases, these are worse, apart from the suppressors. Mm. And, uh, and I don't think this person like. Uh, I guess over there he's ruffling feathers, you might say. So, and a lot of people probably know, might know who he is as well. He seems to be like a, a nice fella as well. He, he's pretty yeah. the same. He doesn't care, from what I understand, what I see of his demeanor. He doesn't care what people think about him. He has a lot of, a lot of, a lot of issues. I remember, I remember years ago, and I got, I got no problem saying this because I don't really care either way. Uh, I interviewed a guy from England. It's not this guy we're talking about right now, but uh, these two guys went head to head there for a while. His name was uh, Mike Yardley. Uh, a lot of people might know Mike Mike Yardley. He was a shotgun connoisseur. Uh, he had, I think he did it on the Discovery Channel, did a, uh, what would you call, like a reenactment of the, uh, what's it called, not the, down in Dallas, Texas, the shooting of JFK. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, so he did a reenactment whether to see that was possible. And uh, him and this, uh, Mike Yardley and the guy we're probably going to have on in a couple of weeks was, you know, they, they're often going head to head with each other. And Mike Yardley's, oh, we don't need semi autos. These are bad. And just your typical fart. I just can't believe I interviewed that Mike Yardley. I really can't. Like, he's a wealth of knowledge, Mike Yardley, no doubt about it. But man, his views are like just, you know, totally out of step with the average shooting community, you know, bow to the antis. And, you know, if I could delete that podcast off my uh, library, I probably would, you know, or replace it with something else but yeah. uh you know the guy was just a goober absolute goober you know when i see some of these comments now i just think oh you know even just to have him associated on my library is me interviewing him Ugh, you know but anyway what do you do man what do you do sometimes it's good and bad not everything's good and bad i guess so uh, you know he didn't really say this on my show but it was after i did because i did him very did that show very early on in the podcast many many, many years ago now so anyway let's yeah. move on we'll got a lot yeah. to, lot to talk about Exactly. Before we um, start, I want to thank the NSC for sponsoring tonight's show. I've been a great supporter of the show, and uh, it's always a pleasure uh, having them on here. So thank you very much, the NSC. Their link's in the description as well, so please click on it and become a member. So uh, thank you very much, the NSC, for bringing you this show and doing such good work. I think they just started legal action not long ago, couple of weeks ago in Tasmania to fight gun bans down there. The appearance laws, I think it was on a PC charger. So no one else is doing it. So the NSC are doing it. They've taken up the um, torch and, and uh, doing that, So which is good. So links in the description. Go over to NSC and um, show, you, show them some love because they do help our show out as well. So... Um, let me say one yeah. thing Aaron Johnson said. Well, he's a POM, end of story. Ha, ha. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but yeah, also, too, I mean, there's a lot of good you know, English you know, guys that I've interviewed, oh, yeah. mate, that just don't think like that. And uh, yeah. uh, I was about to say the guy's name then that we're coming on next week, but the I was, oh, man, oh, I'm surprised it didn't come out of my mouth. Then it, what I was thinking, <laughs> it shouldn't come out, but it didn't, thank God. Um, well, uh, but he, he thinks like us and uh, went through some interesting things. So, uh, yeah. It should be very good. It should be a very good podcast or a very good uh, live stream podcast slash video, mm -hmm. whatever you want. What do you call these? Video streams, live cast, yeah, live, live, live live stream. They're basically on the same day as we do it, So which is good. He's got 20,000 subscribers, so he gets some good numbers as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. he uh, mentioned, I think it was, um, what was it? He mentioned something about self-defense, and then a couple of days later, the cops kicked down his door and took all his guns. Something along those lines. But yeah, we will yeah, do a yeah. bit more. We will do a bit more research on that. So, uh, yeah, well, he's lucky because uh, the time difference is a bit – it's 10.30 in the morning when I 
when uh, the American dudes come on my show, it's like two or three in the morning for them. So, um, so it's not not too bad for them to come on time wise, which is good. Someone so, was chat let me just say this because this is very important someone goes oh oz gun sales and used guns chat is down right now so yeah, i just went on both that. of them you are right they are both down and uh i do sometimes a bit of work with uh oz gun sales dave from oz gun sales and uh we have a bit of a cross-platform um, advertising agreement and stuff like that pro gun as as they come guys pro gun as they come dave uh so yeah, if you're ever on the internet and you want to, you know, basically put your used guns on there, go to ozgunsales.com. Really, really good guy. I probably shouldn't plug him on Aaron's show with that talking no, to him. But um, he's, I'll just bring it, bring it up here now and having a look. Yeah, he's a really good uh, guy, Dave. And uh, so, yeah, jump on his site, use his services. Really, really nice fella. Pro, pro gun probably than 99.9999% uh, of people in the shooting community in Australia, So, which is good. So, yeah, maybe it's a specific service that's down. Maybe it's a specific um, – Well, this page won't even – Both down at the same time. It won't even load for me. Oh, here we go. I oh, know. Uh, I'm actually on Osgaz Sales now. Yeah, it's on here. Um, there we go. It's, it's on there. Oh, what the hell is this? Shill, an absolute shill. Where uh, is it? Oh, yeah, you scroll, to the, scroll to the bottom. Scroll right to the bottom. Is mine on the bottom or on the top? Oh, you were at the top. You're at the top. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh nice. Good. That. Yeah, lowering the value of the um of his of his website. <laughs> you <laughs> bastard! You are a uh, bastard. Yep, yeah, now it's up and running, which is good. It's good to see. There you go. Don't, don't, don't want to see it. Um. Let's have a look at some of these prices, shall we, guys? You know, let's have a look at what, what's here while we're here. Uh, Savage, $1,100. Uh, yeah, wouldn't pay that for that. Look at that fab arm. Oh, very fab nice. Arm. They are nice guns. They are nice guns. Three grand. Parazzi. Uh, what? Parazzi? It's $2,000 just for a stock of a Parazzi. I mean, yeah, great guns, but holy crap, who's going to spend, what, 15, 20K on a shotgun? I mean, you know, what is it, metal? It's just two tubes stuck together. Hey, I love my shotguns like most yeah. people, but I don't know if they're worth that sort of money. Yeah. Uh, we were going to do um, price, compare prices from Australia um, to overseas. Does anyone want to see that? We're going to think of doing that for a show and yeah. just see how – oh, there we go. Gone. But it's internet here. Oh, that's for later on, that one. Um <laughs> <laughs> supposed to bring that up later on. Yeah, we're going to go through some price uh, differences on on what Australia or you know what America's charging retail compared to what that is for Australia. But obviously, we 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 don't know what you know the wholesale prices people are getting in Australia. Maybe we should do a comparing podcast to see the prices in Australia versus uh, you know overseas yeah. to see what they're paying. See if we're you know getting Basically. take a little bit advantage of so. Yeah, basically the most common sort of uh, a range of common guns. We might do that and see, uh, yeah, the big price differences and you guys can make your opinion up whether we're getting ripped off or not. Um, Jay, so thank you very much. Hey, boys, been a while. What's your opinion on Savage BA Stealth, 6.5 Creedmoor or Mossberg MPV, 6.5 Creedmoor for PRC? Cheers. Um, the Savage BA Stealth, okay, I just said I want to buy that Savage on, the, on that site, but... um. Yeah, that's not a bad gun, actually, the, the Savage um, BA uh, Stealth. The Evolution version, which is basically just tarted up a little bit more, I've seen comparisons, and that was actually out shooting the Seiko uh, TRG. It was actually leaving the Seiko for dead, and it was half the price. Uh, the Mossberg MPV, yeah, I haven't had re yeah, haven't really heard very many good things about the uh, Mossbergs. Uh, at all, so I, I would go, probably go the BA Stealth over the Mossberg. That's for sure. Yeah, and they're not they're not that cheap, man. That uh, Stealth, they're not they're not uh, they're what not the, cheap. At all, man, I'm just trying to look for some prices now. Well, there you go. Were, that's the 338 Lapua. Uh, wow, oh wow, the BA Stealth Evolution. Or oh, is that the next model up? I'm just trying to look at. Wow, I mean they're at least. I mean, the BA Stealth Evolution's 3,400, uh, 3,410. Is that in BA Australia? Could, the Evolution was about four grand here. 
Yeah, I'm looking what? up one here. That's the BA Stealth Evolution, 4,435. But the BA Stealth 110, 338, Lapua, 24-inch, 3,250. So I'm sure you're going to get a pretty good, you know, that's that, that sort of pricing. You know, you should be getting something good for that. If you're not, well, then shit, you know, <laughs> that's not very good at all, you know, and they should re rethink their pricing structure. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, here's uh, Joseph. Thank you for the $10, um, Joseph. Uh, it is fine to wear high-vis orange clothing for hunting if you don't own proper hunting gear or do animals tend to pick up on it due to lack of patterning. I know I normally just wear um, – I always wear long pants, that's for sure, especially in Queensland because we've got lots of nasty snakes. And so I normally just wear um, cargo pants or something like that or I've got hunting pants. Depends how hot it is. It gets bloody hot here, as everyone knows. And I just wear a T-shirt normally. Mm. I think people like this, and I'm going to go all out and probably going to make me sound like a dick, you know. But, man, I've including me, I've called in foxes. One time I was up here near my house, I was uh, like a, a, a bike track. I rode up into this, you know, goes up into this, not rural area, but sort of where these houses are. There's a bit of blackberry. Mate, I called a fox into two metres with my helmet on, my glasses on, my black Nike wickaway T-shirt and a pair of, like, you know, you know, shorts. You know, I called it into about two metres. I was just sitting there just staring at it woo -woo, with the whistle, came around underneath the fence, up the little, you know, like I was sitting up on, like, a little ledge about probably three or four metres, not even that, and it got to about – it basically could have licked my leg. So – I hate to say it, but uh, I've seen guys shoot deer in flannelette T-shirts, a pair of blue jeans. Uh, you know, I, again, is the is the camouflage thing? I think, it, to be honest, if I'm being brutally honest, I think it's a bit of a rot. I think it, movement, smell, sight will give you away much, much, much more than than any camo gear can ever ever give you. In my, that's my opinion. Whether people agree or not, I don't know. But again, I've shot things in. I've, I've shot deer, uh, gone into a forest. I've got there about four o'clock. I know I've only got an hour to go before the five twenty past five, you know, half past five, you know, sundown. And mate, I've shot deer. I've shot deer in my uh, black work jeans, a college shirt, <laughs> a pair of shoes, and I've shot deer. So. Again, not saying there's anything wrong with the stuff. I just say, does it work as much as people say it does? I just don't believe that's the case, man. I just don't believe that's the case. But in regards to the high-vis orange, it's always good, especially if you're on public land. I would not even think of going anywhere without blaze orange, a hat. Um, you know, they, they don't see those colours, so you're okay. Ducks, on the other hand, well, that's a whole different kettle of fish. As far as I'm aware, they will see the orange. So if you're on private land and you know no one's shooting on there and you're the only person, no problem. Um, but at the end of the day, too, you know, if you're going to be on public land, I know people that go into the bush and they, yeah, they they have a, you know, they they've got their mate there and he might be sitting next to him. The other guy falls asleep for 20 minutes. I mean, you know, you're just crazy to be lying on the ground anywhere in a state forest or public land, especially if you don't have any um, blaze orange. Obviously, mandatory in New South Wales state forest, which I think is good. You know, mm -hmm. if they, and I just think if someone's shooting you still and you got blaze orange, well, they're trying to kill you because. Uh, no, no bloody retard in their right mind would shoot blaze orange thinking it's a goddamn deer. So, uh, no, no, that's like, what I, I do. Yeah, it's definitely worth wearing the at least a high vis vest you get it for like 10 bucks from Bunnings, that's yeah. for sure. So, would you, what do you say you were wearing a helmet? No, a hat, I had a hat on. You said helmet. Oh, did I? Sorry. Uh, I, meant, I, yeah, blaze orange hat. I, I always wear a blaze orange hat. And then sometimes I even went to, it's not a piece of clothing, but I have the hat on. And sometimes I have like, I went to the, you know, those Asian fabric stores sort of thing. And I found like a fluoro flexible you know, bit of material. So I just like, can you just give me a meat? I think it was like $4 or something. And then what I did is I cut it into strips and I just tied it onto my backpack. So that way no one's going to, at least they don't see me, they're not going to shoot me in the back or whatever. So and I just hang it off the, you know, big strips, you know, yay long, maybe half a meter, something like that. Just tie it up, boom, around one of the loops, let it go you on know, both sides. And that way it gives you a couple of extra forms. And um, what's he on here? Where was it? Uh, uh, conservative well, snipers, nothing wrong with the Buffalo River pants. Not saying anything. Anything's wrong with the 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 camo. The quality, quality's fantastic. I'm just talking about whether you know you can shoot animals without it. I know guys that go in a pair of cheap Oscams and a twelve dollar Oscam shirt off eBay and shoot more deer and more animals than you can possibly imagine. So you know, if you feel good and you want to spend the money, hey, go right ahead. I just think you know, um, spending that sort of money. You know, especially some of the expensive gear that's going around is just is wasted money, just my opinion. But if you've got the money and you want to spend it, 
Have exactly. at it. Exactly. When you said you wear a helmet, this is what I thought of. Simple Jack wearing a helmet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jason. Let's go hunting. <laughs> you are a jack. That's it, guys. This will be my final live stream. It's been great knowing you guys. Uh, it's been great, but I'll be no longer appearing from uh, – should I just I should just press the X button now just remove myself right now? Well, Who is that? Got, we're, 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 yeah, we've already got you up here anyway. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll just have you each week on this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. simple jack. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, I agree, Taylor. You don't need to spend big bucks on um uh, on camo. Yeah. I know guys who just go out in jeans and um a black t shirt or a white t shirt yeah. and you no know, on private property. You know, do you think farmers when they're going to cull animals, they get all kitted up in camo? They just wear what they're wearing, basically. Mm. And you'll be uh, – you're, you're at distance. They're not going to see you. Wind, smell, sight, way more important than anything else. Like I think most people would uh, uh, would agree with that. You know I mean? Jeez, I'm copping it here now on the on the thing, man. Uh, we'll bring you know, oh, Chris Miller. Thanks, Chris. He said, go easy on me. Thank you very much. I totally agree. Uh, <laughs> you know, what a bastard, eh? What a bastard. This is the guy that can't get the intro right, guys, and he's having a go at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hang on, Aaron Johnson said taken from Jason's selfies. Yeah, that was taken on the weekend, man, that one. Jason's talking <laughs> again. Up comes this picture. <laughs> Hang on. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Simple Jack, and uh, <laughs> welcome back. I'm a hunter, and I've got big buck teeth. Uh, never go full retard. You know that. Never uh, go full retard. <laughs> anyway, let's get yes. into – let's get into yes. – <laughs> okay, well, we do have one thing before we get into the uh, thing. It was from a Patreon here. He did ask me. Yeah. Uh, uh, gee. Uh, why, are you so, why is Aaron so stupid? Guys, I don't know. Uh, you have to tell me. You have to tell me why. Uh, hang on. I'm hang still on. yet to figure it out. I'm still yet to figure it out. Hang on, Simple Jack. Hang on. Uh, Travis White, uh, can we talk about Queensland getting – thank you, Travis. He's a Patreon, so sign up to Patreon, guys. Always try and converse with you guys through there. Uh, can we talk about Queensland getting their R class, excuse me, to hunt in New South Wales and how to get it up here in, Queens, up here in Queensland? Well, um, well, Jason, well, basically, well, I don't really know the process – because I don't go to New South Wales public land hunting, but Jason does. I know whatever Jason's got to do, we can just fill out the forms yeah. and and do the. Um, I don't know what what is the process. Yeah, so you just got to first off, you got to join a club. So the club uh, has to have basically what do they call it? I'm just I've, I've totally gone blank on the terminology, but basically it's uh, to support. There's certain clubs that you have to join that are associated with the game council, right? Well, former game council, now the DPI, right? So obviously your large organisations have done that as well. So obviously you'd be one of those one of those organisations. You then have to do the test. Um, well, last time again, this is many years ago since I did it, but you got dogs, you got bows, obviously you got firearms and black powder. I just think it's better off to do the test for all of them. So you've got to find someone that does the test. I think there are some people in Queens that do the test, some gun shops. Don't quote me on that. Um, but if you're just very close to the border, you can ring up a few gun shops uh, or even ring the DPI themselves and see who's running courses. But if you ring, you know, your large organisations, they'll be able to put you in the right direction. I just say just do all of it. So guns, bows, dogs, you don't, you don't want to be going back and, you know, having to redo it and, you know, if you don't select the right ones. And I not, didn't take my own advice initially. Um, I think I did all of them other than – bow and dogs i think so i was stupid enough not to do that i wish i had because if i ever wanted to do that well i'd have to go read back and do the test and then yeah you just go on the website you, you log in you've got your membership and you basically start booking in state forests where you want to hunt start doing scouting download the maps do all that good work that you can download the kmz files for google earth um, find good camping spots from google earth places you're going to want to hunt entry points uh you name it that's what i always do for a hunt and uh yeah, it's successful, man, and I've been really successful on public land over the years. It took a couple of years to just learn and, and get better and eventually you get better and you start learning things and, you know, sitting and waiting, finding good spots, sitting and waiting. That's a good tip I'll give people. And, uh, yeah, good luck and hopefully you shoot some deer or foxes or rabbits or whatever game you're after. 
Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So uh, you can't, yeah, so that he can get it. Unfortunately, last year there was a big petition sent into the Queensland government on public land hunting in Queensland, and the government just turned around, laughed at the, uh, threw it in the bin, and said, this isn't ever, ever going to happen pretty much under any government in Queensland, which is a real shame. So, we, yeah. so we've got to take our dollars down to New South Wales. Just yeah, make sure, yes. Uh, when I was talking before about what they've got to be, the organisation you, you, you're with has got to be an AHO. That's what I was talking about, an approved hunting organisation. So be over 12 years old, uh, be a member of an approved hunting organisation. Most of them do, uh, most most of the big ones anyway. And then you've got firearms, bows, dogs, black powder, so I was correct on that. Uh, and then have a parent guardian if you're uh, age of 12 to 18, if you're under 18 years of age. So uh, and it says, before qualifying for an allies, you must become a member of the AHO. Uh, you must also maintain your membership to maintain the valid R license. So you can't just join the club. Uh, and, you know, the one that maintains your R license, you need to remain a member of, pretty much like a genuine reason, I guess you might say. And then, yeah, you, you do three years, 140, four years, 180, five years, 217. That's for concession rate, sorry. One year, 75, two years, 145, three years, 210, four years, 270, and five years, 325. I just do it for like minimum three to five years every time because you, know, you don't want to be doing this crap all the time. So, mm, Exactly, exactly. Mm. And, uh, Colin Penfold says, nice to have Colin back, uh, Hunters and Shooters Society in Queensland hunts in New South Wales, runs our courses and there supports the NSC. So there you go, guys. Get on to Hunters and Shooters Society if you're in Queensland. They'll do the course for you, and you can go down to New South Wales. Just make sure you don't have a folding stock on your gun when you when you go down there. Yeah, make sure you bring a compliant gun. Don't bring a gel blaster or anything. So they, mm. I actually tried to get some information out of uh, weapons licensing and that this week, or not this week, last week, about, uh, for example, when we go down and – shoot deer on Chris Miller's property, I'm going to have to drive through New South Wales. Um, and most of my guns are proper guns, not oh, New yeah. South Wales guns. And I'm just travelling through. What's the go? Even if I do a clean yeah. run and just escape the entire state, don't stop for nothing and just keep on going. <laughs> You'll have to go around, man. you have to go through the Northern Territory yeah. and then down through uh, across to maybe possibly even across the WA uh, well, actually, let me see the map. Does that intersect? I mean, I don't even know my own uh, geography yeah. here. Um, but you might have to go through Northern Territory, cross over potentially. Hang on, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Queensland. No, you should be able to go. You have to go right to the corner, down to South Australia, right to Australia, then into the, the promised land of Victoria. Uh, yeah. Well, used to be the promise in Victoria, but uh, not since Daniel Andrews took over. But, yeah, you have to go to the corner and intersect through South Australia into Victoria. So that's about probably 2,000, 3,000 kilometres. Good luck with that. Yeah, I think I'll just bring something that up. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, what <laughs> if you actually fly, because flying probably would be okay, you just fly from, you know, there straight to Melbourne, then we'll get Chris Miller to pick us up, man. That's the least Chris can do is pick us up and let us shoot deer on his property. <laughs> yeah, and um, and feed us and clothe us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. and provide full meals, and uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just, and, cool. and 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 an endless bar. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, we can't. I, we can't fly because Qantas now, I think, is the only one letting firearms on their planes. And Qantas has said, if you don't get the experimental Wu flu poison jab, you ain't going on their planes. So that counts us out. Exactly. I'm not going to be tra I'm not going to be tracked like a dog um, through this woo flu bloody passport crap. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get into our our article for tonight, man. We, again, you've just blabbed on for way too long. Uh, you know, we're answering questions, yep. which is good because we're going to answer questions. Let's get into the article, yep. this pig hunting one. Yep. This is this is quite interesting about uh, this goes back to putting videos up and, you know, where you think something's really not that big of a deal, how it can possibly, you know, come back and bite you, which is a bit disappointing. Well, exactly. Well, there was a case a couple of years ago and a guy actually uh, took a photo on the back of his tray. He had his gun bags and a couple of cartons of beer saying off on a hunting trip. 
as innocent as that, before he knew it, within hours, the cops were seizing him and he had to come down for questioning at the police station. Why has he got alcohol and guns out? Well, it was the gum bags and all his camping gear with a couple of cartons of beer. And that, excuse me, was just an innocent photo on uh, Facebook. And the poor bugger had to go be questioned like a criminal and um, and run over the coals. Of course, poor bugger's probably a bit worried, and you, as you would be. Um, and, uh, yep, yeah, that's, that's what, just one example. And we do hear about a lot of this sort of stuff. Look what happened to Steve Lee. Posted a couple of things. Boom, license is gone. So he's lost all his licenses and everything, and um, he's gone to court and he can't get them back. So this is an interesting one. Uh, I'll bring this up. Hang on. Oh, it's a selfie, selfie of Jason. Yeah, well, he's bastard. <laughs> Jeez, he's bastard, isn't he? He's a real bastard, this bloke, isn't he? Uh, Absolutely bastard. And we'll bring up. Just make sure there's nothing yeah. on you on your, your your desktop that I can get you for. You haven't got something anything bad on there, do you? No, <laughs> no. This is my uh, business computer, so um, it's all clean. So, a lady um, did a video. Now, it doesn't say whether she posted it online it was on her phone and we'll go quickly go through the article it's not too long uh, know your regulations to protect your favorite pastime and never been more important with all the hunting forms being um uh, forms being attacked and cancelled blah 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 going about social networking uh so Let me just make, I'm just reading it too and changing the guard. It was actually this is because it's just way too long probably to read the whole thing out. Um, it says uh, the opinion of the of the lawyer Dan Crevy, who said while yeah. it was an activity that's entrenched in the bush, pig hunters need to become more aware uh, what the various regulations do and don't allow. The prosecution was actually bought by remember this group guys, the RSPCA against Kim Bolger, who had been on a property. Uh, at Yalanga, north of Kingsthorpe, at the request of the landowner to help her clear out feral pigs. Miss Bolger, 39, filmed the action on July 9, 28 on her phone, and the footage was played at the Toowoomba Magistrates Court during the sentence. She pleaded guilty to one count of un unlawfully allowing an animal to injure another animal uh, after her two dogs bit and held a feral pig and was fined almost $5,000. Regulations for pig hunting vary from state to state, and Miss Bolger had been living in the Northern Territory, had not realised that Queensland, it could be considered unnecessary for hunting dogs to hold and bite the dog, although some people do the right thing, the use of dogs with, uh, sorry, while pig hunting is humane, if done correctly, and there needs to be more consistency with the regulations, Mr. Creevy said, but I guess is her lawyer. Uh, in Victoria, dogs are only allowed to flush and bail out pigs and are not allowed to bite, hold up, hit, on a pig, he said, in New South Wales, dogs are allowed to locate, bail, and hold pigs as long as the dog does not inflict unnecessary pain. A lot of inconsistencies, guys, among each individual state. Some you can't touch them at all. Other you can hold on to them, but as long as it doesn't cause unnecessary inflicted pain. Uh, and then, and obviously, then in Queensland, uh, it was it's a it's a similar sort of thing. Can't even you can hold on to them, but you have know, inflict pain apparently. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of indiscrepancies between each yeah. different state about exactly what you can and can't do. And when exactly. people move from states, you, you just can't keep abreast of all this different legislation that and comes up, you know. There's pretty much only one way to hunt with dogs, and they grab the pig and hold it down, grab it by the ears so it can't move. Now, here's an interesting thing, a bit of a jargon. A guy commented on this page, uh, did she represent herself? Uh and the feral pest or the feral or pest animals found this relevant. Uh, this section applies to an offence of an act constitutes the offence is an act done by a person to control a feral animal or pest animal, including, for example, by killing it. The act does not involve the use of prohibited traps or spur, which obviously she didn't. Um, it is an offence exemption for the uh, offence. So basically, what I can see from there, I'm no lawyer or anything, but it's uh, saying um, yeah, if you're not using anything illegal, it, it should be all right. But then it's um, as if the, the act is done in a way that causes the animal's little pain 
and is reasonable and the control complies with any conditions prescribed under the regulation. I don't know if he's got the whole part there, but let us Is know what you guys think in the comments. I mean, I, 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 I just don't think, you know, putting a video, not that she, I haven't seen the video at all, right, but I'm just saying just in general for people out there that do hunt with the dogs, I think, you know, dogs going after it and absolutely mauling a pig is probably not a good look and definitely not a good look you really want to be putting up on the internet. Um, but, you know, I see no problem with them, you know, in, in some states though it's legal to, to grab onto them, to hold them and, you know, to, to, to make the pigs comply, you know what I mean, to a certain degree. They start biting the ears off and, you you know, biting, it's, you know, it's, that's a no-go. Obviously, in any sort of thing, we're trying to kill the quarry as, as you know, reasonable, quickly and humanely as we possibly can. You know, getting it mauled by a dog for, for a minute before you kill it, I wouldn't say would be would be really a good thing. I think most people wouldn't wouldn't like that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, grabbing on its ears, holding it, bailing it up, holding it, mate, more than reasonable to, by the time you get over there, lift its leg, plunge the knife in and bleeds out and done deal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, just one, just uh, one of the things. Um, you just got to be so careful of hunting videos. And I've said this before. I've read twice now articles from YouTube, and it's coming up. Any hunting videos on your channel, your cha they're looking at just fully removing your channel. No strikes, no nothing. It's just going to be gone. So, yeah, just going to be. They're going to get us any way they can. You know what Google are like? They're completely useless. They did me this week for legally <laughs> for legally using music in last week's live stream. They they mm. did me for that. So they, they got yep, yeah, they're even gonna come after hunters on their YouTube channel. So Stan Stan yeah. man said if your dog if your dog humps the pig, will it be up for sexual harassment? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Bestiality. Um yeah, so guys, yeah, this is one thing. I'd like to know how. What I want to know is how they got this on her phone. Whether she where she posted to Facebook, which is normally they do get on Facebook. Now I do know um, the cops do go through Facebook a lot and just randomly search things because one of the guys in the neighbourhood is a copper, and that's his job. He goes through uh, Facebook posts and look for things to charge people on. So you've just got to be so careful. It's something that you, you and me would think. The RSPCA as well, man. That's one of the big ones, yeah. RSPCA. They're, you know, first one to, to take money. Like while the RSPCA kill hundreds and hundreds of thousands of animals every year, I mean, and they're trying to tell us what inhumane is. I mean, they is just like PETA. RSPCA, the biggest jokes in the animal community. They kill that many animals themselves, all the while telling us, oh, no, don't bite its ears or don't grab it by the ears or RSPCA to just shut up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Jeez, end of the day, you're sending a dog out to hold an, an animal down. You, can't, you, know, you can only train it so much. It, it's got its, its own mind. It's got to uh, do pretty much what it wants. And, hey, what's wrong with getting rid of the wild pigs off the property? I've seen what they do to the calves and the animals. Uh, a dead pig's a good pig, if you ask me. doesn't matter how you get there as long as it's gone. Yeah, I mean, still, you've got to try and do that humanely, you know what I mean? Like, is you know, if, if dogs jump off and bail it up, hold it by the ears, and then, you know, you take it out, that's more than the thing. If it starts mauling the animal, you know what I mean? Some people are probably going to have a problem with that, especially if you the legislation, I mean, again, Got to look at the legislation in a specific state about what's what's doable and what's not doable. And you know, obviously, if you put it on the internet and things maul and the the pig, I mean, you know, it's just a bad look for everybody involved. So we've got to like not do that. You know, try and train the dog properly. That'd be a good start. You know, yeah, they get a bit of blood. They get a bit, you know, full on. They get a bit gung ho. The old dogs, they love it like the hunters do. So you just got to make sure it's trained properly and. Um, you know, hold, hold onto its ear or something or whatever. In some cases, in like I said, in Victoria, it can only bail up the pig. It can't touch it at all. Like, you know what I mean? So it just starts having a nibble, nibble on its ear. That's that's enough to possibly get you a uh, a charge. So, yeah. Exactly. So, well, yeah, well, the RSPCA just comes across. They, they saw the video from what I can see here. They saw the video, snitched to the cops on it, and the cops uh, – Decided to waste time and resources on charging this this poor lady, which is ridiculous. Yeah. If um, if uh, Miss Bulger is watching the show, get hold of us and tell us your side of the story. It'd be be very interesting to find out. Well, I did shoot one a couple of weeks ago, and it was bloody 
waist deep in a bloody blackberry you know, you know, was snorting around and then eventually it died in the blackberry but i would have liked to have knuckled it on the spot but it had to be the perfect shot at like 312 meters from the top of a vehicle and uh you know obviously died in the blackberry but i would have liked a more you know humane i knew i had to drop it on the spot because if i didn't i knew it was going to even if it just you know rolled over and got half a meter it was going to be in the blackberry and i wasn't going to be able to re retrieve it and that's what happened i mean i was happy to take out some a pig but you know i would have liked to have got a couple of photos as well but uh, unfortunately it wasn't to be yeah, exactly exactly well lucky you didn't because it didn't die straight away so they could have nailed you for it so you allegedly shot a pig yeah, uh, shot. Go on. Hey? Yeah, yeah, you allegedly shot it. Um, thank you for a five dollar um uh, donation, Bagara. No one likes pigs, especially their own canine units in Victoria. Yeah, that was quite funny, wasn't it? The uh, the uh, canines turned on their police handlers this week. Um, <laughs> we have to look that one up. Actually, that that was um big news. I didn't even see that. What happened? Oh, so, oh, I can't remember the full story. I had to find it. Might Google it now. And uh, yeah, the, the um, yeah the police dog turned on and bit their own, bit the police. So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was a uh, yeah, <laughs> totally out of the blue, unbelievable. So they obviously they're not well trained. The even the uh, police dogs aren't well trained. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's just all this stuff happens and, you know, what do you do, man? All, hey, I'm, I'm just not surprised these days. Anything that happens, I just roll with the punches. I'm not surprised, not shocked in any way. It's just it's just crazy what's happening. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so basically uh, just be careful what you post. Like the guy, he just innocently posted the stuff on the back of his ute, loading it up for a hunting trip. With beer and um and gum bags, and the police saw that enough to um har harass him, and and he had to go down and justify himself. He got off everything, but why waste time on all that crap? Why? It's just unbelievable. You know, so just got to be so careful. When I started this channel, guys, I talked to Weapons Licensing quite a, for quite a while on the phone. Had a big conversation with the head of Weapons Licensing. Told him what I was going to do, do some sort of gun reviews, fun shooting stuff. That sort of thing. And he goes, not a problem. Here's what you can do and you can't do. And I've followed everything from the advice from weapons licensing down to a T for all these years. Eight years I've been doing this. And um, yeah, he said, you're good in Queensland. We don't care what you do as long as you're not blowing things up with um, explosives that you need an explosive license for. Said so everything else, you're pretty much right um, to do what you want to do. Um, just... If you're going to be, and he said, if you're going to be blowing things up, just make sure you don't start a fire. He said, that's the main thing. Um, just don't start a fire um, and make sure there's no fire ban on in your area on the day that you film. And he was, I've got to give him that much. The head of weapons licensing at the time, I can't remember his name, it was eight, eight nine years ago, was, um, yeah, and he wished me luck. He said, good luck in your show and I hope it all works out for you. So I'll give him that much. Yeah. He's since he's since has been left. He, he left from what I heard. So he's not the head anymore. Um, yeah. So you, yeah, you just got to be so careful what you post. You um, yeah, people get pinged on everything. People are getting pinged in Facebook for holding a gun, and they're and it's their friend's gun, and they're unlicensed. <sighs> Oh, uh, man, you got to be careful. Remember, guys, always be careful with things that you do these days, just in case, because. You know, you might get, you know, you never know when someone, you think you're doing something right and, you know, as we all know, there's a myriad of laws that they're trying to catch you up on, you know, um, sorry, uh, trying to, you know, catch you up on and stuff like that. So you just never know what's going to happen. So just take it easy and always think about what you're doing and, you know, because you never know, you never know when they're going to come knocking on your door. Exactly. Exactly. And here's considered a uh, sniper. Don't tickle your dog balls. They will have you up on charges in no time flat. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you're not doing that anyway, dude. Hopefully you're not <laughs> doing that anyway. <laughs> <'cause I'm, laughs> Why are you tickling your dog's balls for, man? Like you just give it a female <laughs> dog and let it do its thing, man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to get it in the mood. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just put a female dog there to get in the mood. Don't worry. Um, exactly. 
Anyway, what do you what do you guys think about this? Let us know in the comments. But we've only got ninety three thumbs up. So if you if you're still watching, which we're doing good, we're doing one hundred and ninety plus people. Give it a thumbs up, guys. Uh, just get that over a hundred. We appreciate that. And we've only got two yeah. thumbs down tonight. So thank you to those yeah. two people giving thumbs down. We we normally get a few more than that. So it looks like yes. maybe they've given up and uh, realised they love the stream and they've given it a thumbs up. They've we've converted yeah. them. Great news. Yeah, they realised that we're the only. Uh, live stream that, that speaks the truth and um, yeah. no PC. Yeah, and people are asking me again. I haven't, we haven't heard much from um, what's happening in uh, Western Australia. I got a few uh, messages and stuff this week when I was away. Sorry to the people I haven't responded to yet. I've just pretty much got straight back home and straight back into you know my full-time job. So, um, yeah, it looks like it was a uh, – as far as I'm aware right now, I haven't done a full check today – but it looks like, uh, yeah, yeah, full bloody whitewash. We lost everybody in in WA. That was, uh, you know, whether we thought they were yeah, pro shooting or not, uh, it's a complete whitewash in WA. We've lost everyone. So, again, you know, we're going backwards. And um, this is why I, I, I changed up my tune sort of a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and just said that, you know, again, there's this political thing of getting more people into parliament just really – I thought it was for about eight years. I really did, and we gave it a good push, didn't we? We gave it a good sting, and just unfortunately, we, we, we're just going backwards. We can't even maintain the people we've got in Parliament now, let alone add more. And um, so, again, this is why I kept pushing that, you know, the court angle and stuff like that was really going to be, you know, the, the way forward. And, uh, you know, it just goes to prove again now we've lost another, you know, three, you know, whilst I wouldn't consider some of them realistically pro-gun, uh, in my books, that's my books anyway, maybe to other people. But, you know, again, that we're going backwards. We just lost three people. So uh, I think it's time that, again, people just you know, start sort of giving up on the idea and being, being so passionate about the the political area of firearms. They're saying, well, we've got to have more people in parliament. It's not going to do anything. The last five years, six years has proven that even the people we do have, unfortunately, don't get results. I mean, it's just, that's just the situation and that's proof in the pudding by, well, we haven't got anything legislatively done. So... This is why we keep pushing the court angle, getting him into courts, getting him into tribunals, uh, and, and pushing that route. That's the only thing that's basically been successful so far. Yeah, exactly. I uh, hit them in the hip pocket, and uh, they might start waking up and realizing, hey, uh, this ain't working. And that's what they started doing in the US uh, 30, 40 years ago to start hitting in the hip pocket. And, it, uh, and now look at it now, man. It, basically, everything falls over. But they try and bring up gun bans. They realise now it's a waste of time. It takes time. If we started this 25 years ago after Port Arthur, we wouldn't be in the position we are in now. It should have happened from day one. And why the fuck didn't the organisations back then do that? If you hit it in the back pocket back 25 years ago, we would not be in this mess we're in now. That's what I believe. Yeah, I think we've really dropped the ball, man. We really, really have, and it's it's sad that you know organisations over the years have just let this let this happen. I mean, you know, only there's only you know who's got the money. It's going to be a tough ride. No one, no one's denying that. But I just think we've rolled over way too many times, and it's just it's 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 a bad scenario. And you know, I, I was like that as I just said before. I pinned my hopes on on the political action that was going to be the way forward, but. You know, I just slowly realised, and once you've been in this 10 years, you just slowly realise saying it's just not going to happen on a political level. It's just not going to. And, you know, hey, I've lived this for 10 years. I've interviewed politician after politician from all the different parties and I got told all these things. We're doing this. Want to? You know, we're going to do that and suppressors and this and self-defence and blah, blah, blah. You know what, guys? We're, 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 I'm 10 years later. Uh, I'm, I started this when I was what, literally 30. I'm now 40 uh, on the 12th of April in about five or six days, and not one of these things have been achieved. Not one single thing has been achieved, and it's just it's sad. And this is why we, again, hopefully people are starting to understand this is why we're pushing the, the legal route and, you know, again, flashing our cash and if we've got it and, and helping out the organisations that are fighting for uh, are pushing these things forward because, again, I think that's really the only way forward we've We've proven since 1996, that was 25 years ago almost, uh, and, and pretty much 25 years ago. And, uh, in fact, it's just gotten a lot, lot worse, even with more and more political representation. So if that's not you know, proof in the pudding, so to speak, well, I don't know what is. People say, well, we need more. Well, when are we going to get more? 
It's been it's been a quarter of a century. When are we going to get more in the next fifty? I mean, I'll be dead. I'll be sixty five. I haven't got dead by then, but you know, I'll be sixty five. Are we going to have any results in that? And by that time, in say fifty years, it, it'll be well and truly entrenched. It'll it's if it's not game over already, uh, it will be in the next say ten years if we don't make some massive changes and and get all these organisation on board to, to to continually push hard. Of course, there's going to be ones out there that have absolutely no interest in in pushing any type of law because they you know make money off the back of the National Firearms Agreement. We know that um, you just got to use your money wisely when you join an organisation. Use your money wisely. Only join the ones that have a track history of uh of fighting for your rights so anyway let's just do a quick thing with 20 minutes to go I mean, let's read out yeah. some awesome people's uh uh well, comments just general questions q a and see what they got well chuck you farley they couldn't even get legislation on bloody airsoft going in wa for fuck's sake exactly but you can't even get airsoft and you look at the jail blast remember guys i think it's this week what's the date now um Huh, it's today, guys. If you're in South Australia, you must have a firearms license for your kids' toys or else you're going to jail or whatever they want to do to you. But, uh, yeah, they're going to – it is now illegal, to, um, from what I have heard, to own a, um, a jail blast without a proper firearms license so your kids can have a bit of fun in the backyard playing with guns instead of fucking Barbie dolls. So um, – Yep, today's the crunch time for South Australia. So make sure you have a firearms license or have the process going so your kids can actually be kids. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Harp said, uh, he uh, tagged me, he goes, trust the plan. I mean, yeah, I'd, if there was a plan, <laughs> you know, we've actually got to have a, a set out plan. And this is what, and I've just talked to a couple of guys in. Um, uh, I mean, Aaron, we talked about this previously before. South Africa, like Gosa, gun owners of South Africa. I mean, they don't screw around, man. They don't. There's no political advocacy there. It's it's straight to the courts. It's straight to the courts, and that's why they're so effective uh, because they're straight into court. I mean, again, if we had if we had all types of, I keep on saying, I say it every like live stream, maybe every second. Just wish we had like a a, a, a pro gun Clive Palmer, not Clive Palmer, obviously, but a pro gun one uh, that was you know we had money to to fund and just work off the interest. Uh, to, to fight all these gun bans and, and everything they knew we'd lose everything right but eventually surely i'm hoping that would make a change that they go oh listen if we if we ban this again we're just going to be in court spending money again like you know that's that that should be how they're thinking moving forward if we do something we know straight away they'll be lodging paperwork tomorrow and the process will be starting it should be everything and again but you know uh, you know, there's again, there's organisations out there that have just been sucking the teat of the National Firearms Agreement for better part of 25 years, and have absolutely no interest, no interest at all in uh, in 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 making any ripples for themselves, uh, because you know, yeah, again, comes down to the money, comes down to to, to you know, if, if it's range funding, if it comes down to any type of funding. Uh, that's more important to them, their bottom line, than your or my rights to to get suppressors or self defence or or semi autos or appearance laws. They got no interest in changing any of that, guys. So, if I can just leave you with one thing, it's do not join any of these clubs that aren't have don't have a track history uh, on you know on on taking these things to court. And uh, I keep getting these emails about someone. I think it was Peter mentioning some. Um, you know, petitions. I got again a petition email last week. You know, it's our biggest petition yet, guys. I mean, politicians are laughing at, at petitions. The politicians look at it and go, "Oh yeah, Ben." That's uh, yeah. I just can't believe. But again, it's it's the free way to look like you're doing something by by signing some sort of petition. I've written thousands of thousand letters to politicians, and again, not one of them's come true. Not one change. Uh, you know, I was writing about suppressors in 2012, Aaron, and in 2020, I see organisations posting about, you know, uh, s posting responses from politicians about suppressors saying basically there's no chance of getting suppressors. Well, that was eight years ago. So what do they think they're going to do? One day they're just going to change their mind? No, you have to force them to change their mind by some sort of uh, action, you know, whether that's through the courts, whether that's whatever, or, you know, who knows? Who knows how we're going to get at the end of the day? Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm a, a bit of a stumped uh, 
yeah, I can't believe people are supporting other organisations that haven't done anything really for shooters. It just dumbfounds me. And uh, it, it really, really does. Um, yeah, I'm at a loss for it. Um, I know. Keep your yeah. On the pulse. That's all I'll say. Keep your fingers, keep their fingers on the pulse. Look around on Facebook. You know that you know the ones that are fighting and the ones that aren't. You, you know, we're not going to mention names. You know the ones we're talking about uh, that aren't doing anything. Don't reward them with your money, guys. Don't reward them with your money. You reward them with their money, then what can you do? You know, and I get it. Some have you know options within their membership that are more pleasing than others. I get that. But again, you can't let that sway your decision. You need to, you know, put your money where, you know, people are actually fighting for you. So. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, thank you, John Howard for the $50 donation. Really appreciate it. More bullets funded using uh used guns website is offline. And he's right. I just looked it up. This is used guns. Sorry. Sorry, we're working on the site. So use guns. And then after fixing the site or upgrading it, but that's gone as well. So let's hope nothing bad has happened to use guns. Um, Oz Gun Sales is working, but um, yeah, so I don't know what's happening there. Yeah, uh, JR said, why can't we have interest-free finance when purchasing firearms in Australia? Yeah, good question. I, that, I think that would be popular, like after pay your guns. <laughs> yeah. Zip pay yeah. your guns, zip pay. <laughs> well, what, what I, well, what I reckon, to be honest with you, is uh, because the gun shops make sweet fuck all on the price of guns, right? Uh, it's not really in their best interest. They need the money. They only make like ten percent on a new gun, um, so right. they can't. It's a lot of money. Now they can't be doing um, you know, after pay for ten um, percent over four weeks or whatever it is. They uh, yeah, they make bugger all on new guns bugger all on new guns so uh, it's a shame um and we will do that show comparing prices and everything and it'll be go. quite interesting Cato, aaron matt Cato, hypothetical question he's i'm just gonna you got to do this off the head so i'm gonna go first as soon as you hear the question i'll go first then you hypothetical question you only have four calibers what you're picking i'm gonna go you know i got two four three 250 something in the 6.5 i'm gonna go seven millimeter magnum and 300 winchester magnum go 22 LR, 308, 3006, okay. and 300 rum to stretch it out a bit further. Four thirty cows. All right. Yeah. Or no, 22 LR, 308, yeah, but... 308 for um, in between, and you want to save some money. Uh, 3006 for hunting because it just obliterates them, and you can't be done for inhumane kills because it just destroys them. 30, uh, 30, uh, 300 rum because you can stretch it out further, or Okay, swap the 300 rum or 308 for uh, 338 Lapua. You ain't yeah. going to go wrong there. You can't even shit that 6.5 PRC because it blows bullets up, let alone 300 yeah. with 338 lap. <laughs> yeah, I agree totally with you. <laughs> totally. Um, Matt Cato said 22 LR, 223, 243, 3006. Bagara, 22, 223, 308, 7 mil rem mag. Um, Benny 881 22 LR 223 308 12 gauge. Oh, we forgot. Yes, the 12 gauge. Holy yes. crap, I forgot that yeah, one. Probably 12, 12 gauge 22 306 338 Lapua. Kraken Tactical said a 50 cow smooth bore. I've never is that a thing? Is that sorry? Yeah, again, yeah, yeah it is. It, um, that's isn't that black powder or pirate yeah, stuff? Man. Yeah, nothing yeah. like a big bang and some big cloud smoke coming out of a gun, eh? Yeah, oh, um, Jack Sparrow. Peter Steadout says Oz Gun Sale's not working for him either. Yeah, I just brought it up before it's working. It might be taking a bit slow to load. Here we go. We've got Daniel Andrews. He said 22 LR, 223, 308, 300 Wim Mag. Nick Blackwell, 22, 223, 308, 375, attack. Chris Miller, yeah, 22 sure. Mag, 243, 308, 3030. 30. Always seems to be a lot of very, very, very similar answers, which is it's good. It um, looks like we're definitely not seeing any of the new 6.8 Western, are we? Yeah. <laughs> No, well, what is it? Are uh, the uh, twenty-eight Nosler rubbish, or um, what's the other new one? Are uh, the uh, six mil, is it six mil ARC? You don't see any of that oh, sort of garbage. Aren't. Yeah. Then again, yeah. I hear the twenty-eight Nos is actually pretty good. Maybe it might be a, th a a bigger thing one day as it comes out. But we're just, I guess yeah. we're going to get to the manufacturers. Listen, lay off these calibers, man, please, just for. 
just for yeah you know, five years, just lay off any new calibers. You know, like again, some of them are going to take off, and some are like six point eight Western. Where is that going to fit in again? Winchester, what are you thinking, you goobers? You know, honestly. But remember, they're not making calibers for Australia. We are nothing. I've heard from wholesalers. We are nothing uh, compared to overseas. We're an afterthought. We're like the fucking. We're like afterbirth to the uh, wholesalers. Dump You're like the, we're like the uh, placenta. They scrape into a bucket after yeah. you know. Yeah, then, no, one down the drain. no one cares. <laughs> they're not making anything for Australia. We're an afterthought. We're like the the day after after a bad five dollar hooker. That's it. That's what we're. That's what they think of Australia. Uh, Rob's woodworking said the six point seven Creedmoor. <laughs> <laughs> the six more, or the two sixty one Remington. Even though that's two sixty, is just the name because it's you know a, a two six four. You know, I get so many people say to me when I go two six, they go, "Oh, what, what bullets do I get for it?" And I go, uh, "It's the same as six point five. It's point two six four. They go, "But why is it two six? I don't fucking know. I don't know. You know, and that's what they named it. You know, what I mean? like how am I supposed to know the ins and outs of? I mean, all these calibers. I mean, six mil arc. Has anyone even heard of that? What happened to it? Did it was as quick as it came as it went, or it's, a, it's an AR platform? So I never, never right. caught ground here. Um, but there is a what you said. You said a six point five and a two four three. So what's the point of having a two four three and a six point five? Because basically, it's the same projectile. Well, no, you, 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 you'd scrap the two four three and go a, oh, a six point no, no. five uh, Creedmoor to punch no. it out further. Hang on, the the two four three is six millimeter, not six point five. Exactly. Okay, you're fair enough. But you'd uh, get rid of that and go with six point five, wouldn't you? Oh. Uh, and, and swap the six and swap the um, two sixty for a twelve gauge. Listen, I, I I really like the two four three for varminting, but again, I'm running one forties out of the two sixty. So again, unless you're going to run, you know, maybe some, I think you got ninety five grain V max out of the six point five would be pretty good. But again, all going to come down what we're actually using it for. So I'm going heavy, longer range, sort of, you know, not longer range, but generally, you know, say five to seven hundred with that, you know, um, the, the eighty seven grain V max out of the two four three is is more of a varminting caliber, for, you know, medium range, just up to three. 50 or even 400 if something presented itself uh, but yeah I, i'm thinking on the next one i'd love to get you know uh, 22 250 again cheap projectiles a lot less powder again that'll be good up to that 300 meters uh you know yeah it can go more than that sure and you know as long as you can hit it but you know wind will become, become a factor uh but you know maybe you might rebarrel it to a 250 one day i know all the 243 lovers are gonna are gonna spew here but um i do love the 87 grain v max if you look at the some of the action on youtube from 87 grain v max holy crap you know you think now you know why it's a good cartridge great varmint cartridge but again a lot of powder a bit more extra extra powder uh, I think my powder for two four three is the same as two sixty, about forty something grains, forty two, I think. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about powder. I want to thank. We've had this up for a while. Um, Pig Hunter, uh, five dollar donation. Thank you very much. Ammunition prices out of control in WA. I haven't been able to get uh, to buy my buy powder for t in twelve months. Bloody over it. Yeah. Well, the only thing I can think of this Pig Hunter is. Uh, I do know they have logistics problems actually getting it over there as well. Uh, I think that could be a bit of a problem actually getting it there. But it's all a big grey area, what's happening with powder. Yeah, I know. It's – yeah, it's – it's man, we're just getting screwed left, right and centre. We've got no powder. Yeah, you can still get it some places, obviously, but, you know, I mean, maybe I should start hoarding powder and then selling it for a premium price, but then I'd be a yeah, bastard. And, and, and little baggies. Look, this will get you four bullets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm sending you an ounce of powder. So or not even an ounce. Uh, <laughs> a, a, what are they? I don't even know. As I said, I, uh, what, are they, what are they called? I'm giving you. I'm giving you a gram, a gram, a little a baggie, a gram. You know, uh, of powder. You know, use it wisely. Well, if you feel real rich, hey, you want to buy an eight ball of two two oh eight? Man, I'm I'm not even down with the lingo, man. These days, I don't know what these young kids talk about these days. You know. You'll be down on the street with the five dollar hookers in King's Cross. Go, hey, hey, forget the hookers. Here's an eight ball of two two oh eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about two, going two hundred bucks. Women. Yeah, don't worry about going with these women. What you need is some two two oh nine. Exactly. 
Mm. Well, that's what it's coming to, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, let me put a few up on screen. We've got a few things yeah, coming well, through. A lot of people are very, very similar on the calibers. Uh, twenty-two, two fifties, thirty oh six, the four oh eight Shaytac. That was fur reader. Uh, West, sorry, West Cavina Dodge. Sorry, I haven't seen you before, West Cavina. Five five seventy seven four fifty. Never know when the Zulus will attack. Well, hopefully not anytime soon, my friend. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Pat, a lot of people saying the powders have gone up, and, yeah, they, they seem to have gone up. Again, if you're out of the major cities, it looks like they've gone up, you know, quite considerably in some areas. So, yeah, Exactly. Um, Sydney Militia here. Um, what happened to the hunter that got busted in the video? Well, she got uh, done for $5,000. So yeah, lost yeah. five thousand bucks for having a video of her dogs hunting pigs. So yeah, that, that that was the outcome. I mean, I wonder how bad it was too. Like, I want to see the video. If anyone's got a link to the video, please uh, send it to us on Instagram or Facebook message, or uh, even put in the comments here after the show, just so we can see it. Because I want to. Because the difference between maybe it grabbed on once, then it was just like really just tearing it apart. Like that's not good. But we don't know because we I haven't even seen it. So um, yeah. I'm just. Here, if there's a if there's a video of it, no, there's not no link to it, so unfortunately. And I want to know where it w if it was posted or just on her phone, and why they why they have a phone. I'd say or it was, did... posted, and for sure, it would have been posted. Someone's got a hold of it, complained, and you know the rest is history. It would have been on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I, exactly. Anyway, we've got five minutes to go, guys. Let us know what you want to talk about. Throw up some throw up some quick questions, guys. We're going to do a quick rapid fire with four minutes to go. Go, 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 go. Throw your questions up. Aaron, we're just going to give like two-word answers or something like that. Throw your yeah. questions up, guys, so you, you don't have to be a um, super chatter to do it. That would help. But if you don't want to be, just throw the questions up quickly so we can put them on there. Jason, any deer? No. Um, uh, Wade Dempsey. People have to remember ADI supplies the Australian Defence Force, New Zealand and US military, as well as uh, most of US civilian market powder will run dry. Well, uh, yeah, just supply Australians to start off with. Make, make us, uh, we support you guys, support us first. That's we said quickly, let's go. Uh, favourite oh, deer? I'm, sorry, sir. <laughs> I'm going to go 7 mil Magnum. Go, Aaron. Favourite deer colour, but go, go, go. Video 6. All right, let's go. Bring the questions up. I'm flipping back to your screen. Go, 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 okay, go. Uh, You're wasting a minute of questions, dude. What the hell? I've got, to, I've got to read them first. Jesus. Is a, back in tactical, is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes, only if you put mustard on it. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Furreader, have you hunted Nundal State Forest? No, but I'd like to. I'd like to, definitely like to. I normally go south just because, you know, I like that sort of terrain in that area. But, yeah, um, Ammo, ammo. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh fuck me, come on, man. Questions? What two, the hell? Two, three, three, or two, four, three? I don't he know what a two, three, three, three is. He um, means two, two, three. I'm going to go uh, this one. Two, four, three. I'm going to go two, two, three because I actually love two, two, three. Let's go, go next. Go. Uh, three hundred wind mag. Yep, my favourite. Yep, I'll go with that. Any more scopes? No. No, not at the moment. I'm too poor at the moment, dude. Uh, I've got to start checking uh, my crazy scope buying, so no, no. Favourite toilet paper? Oh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, here's a funny – we're going to tell a story. Stuff this rapid fire. Oh, we're going to no. tell a story here. Jason but... has stuff giving me shit for years about – literally – Shit for years about my chili. I make a big vat, four kgs of chili, and it is awesome. <laughs> and uh, giving me crap for years about it. Oh, you're making your vat a slop. It makes like 24 meals at a time. Great for a bachelor. Heat it up, then get on with it. I'm not one into cooking food and that. And uh, recently, Jason made my chili recipe. And he couldn't stop raving about it. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. I got to admit, I got to admit, it was pretty good. Um, let me go here, and, and no, it was pretty good. You dip those crackers in. Oh, mate, bit of bit of cheese on top, heat it up, beautiful. Uh, Two hundred four, two three. Yeah, with a bit of Deb. I know I'm going full tight ass here. Like Deb, don't even want to make the potatoes. I'd go two, two, three. Uh, here we go. Um, 
Uh, do you ride, Jason? Do you ride motorbikes, ATV, buggies when hunting? Well, I can tell you how he doesn't. <laughs> okay, when I did have one, I'll tell you what. People are going to laugh at this very quickly. Posty bike, CT one ten. <laughs> It is the best thing, man. On private property, you put a basket on the back, few ammo in the basket, yeah, like a milk crate. You laugh at it. That thing was a beast with knobby tires on it. Do not discount the CT110. <laughs> you just cruise up in second gear, no clutch, man. Eee, beautiful, mate. You get up to about 50, 60 k's an hour on the farms. Beautiful. Don't regret it. Well, a Great basket, thing. like a little, little cane basket, like Dorothy from Kansas or something. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, um, uh, can fur reader said where where in um, uh, the south? I mean, there's heaps, man. You got Moragul, Moragul South. When you can get in there, you've got Bago, you've got um, Carabost, you've got um, oh, shit. There's heaps down that way, man. Just got to do your scouting, man. You can't rely on um, um, uh, yeah anything like that. So, and someone mentioned it too, but the when about the toilet paper seems to be a thing now. Uh, <laughs> Wet wipes, uh, mate, they are the best thing when you go into a bush. If it's good enough for a baby's ass, it is good enough for my ass. And it's basically a shower in a bag. I do not go away less than two full-size uh, extra thick. Mind you guys, got to have the extra thick baby wipes. Yeah, you wash, you clean, wash your body and your butt. Sorry to say that, but uh, it's basically keeps you the what, cleanest, especially when it's hot. Well, don't, do you take extra water? I take big containers of water with me i normally take a slab of water like a 600 mil water and i've got a 20 liter jerry can if we get deer we've got to clean water brush your teeth any you know cleaning up stuff like that so yeah, all right I, 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 um, um here we go is is the hooker addiction cheaper than a gun addiction both depends equally as bad no 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 it depends what sort of hookers you're into five star <laughs> hookers probably equivalent to gun addiction uh yep. five dollar king's cross where where jason lives uh, no, they're way cheaper, way cheaper. Because normally they don't have teeth, so they've got no dental plan. So, <laughs> Aaron yeah. only goes for one stars, put it that way. Yeah, um, five, five star, way. Remember, guys, five star hookers all the yeah. way. As Arto yeah. said, amen to the baby wipes. Totally agree. And I did have a few of those um, uh, backcountry um, frozen meals. People complained about them. I was like, this is good. Only problem is they're expensive, those backcountry meals. So I did have a couple of them. Even a couple of the dessert ones are really good. Um, all right, quick, Aaron, I've got to go. Last question. You've got a super chat from um, Joseph Sherman. Yeah. AD, advised uh, Mark, ask an important question. What's that mean? I've got no uh, idea that, myself. Sorry, what no does that idea. mean? I don't know. Thanks for the $5, but I don't, yeah. I don't know. This looks like the Da Vinci Code. Sorry, man. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, uh, I actually had a good one before that. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. David, I used uh, toilet paper and crushed eucalyptus leaves plus water as a sponge water bath in the bush. Well, that is real Bill Greer's shit right there. That is awesome. <laughs> what did you say? What, hang on. What's his name? Uh, David. No, the person, what is it? Some Something who? Yeah, uh, Bear you, Grylls. Oh, Bear Grylls, yeah. I don't think you said yeah. it properly in the first one, you, you mong. No. Anyway. No, yep. All right. We'll call it a night tonight. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the um, the Super Chats. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's just absolutely awesome. And we've had really good numbers tonight once again. I'm pretty sure when we click off this, we'll reach a thousand odd subs, uh, people. So please hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, watch out for some videos that will be coming up once this rain finally stops. And uh, yeah, please just uh, yeah share this around and let people know about the live stream. We are now the uh, largest continuous live stream for guns in Australia. So it's been awesome. And I've got a whole heap of people about to come on. Jason and me are going to, um, I don't know, we've got, we can't really call it an interview because we're not really into interviews. We're just going to be chatting um, off the cuff with people coming up very soon that you guys will like. And, yes, Hootie will be coming back on again. Uh, and you've all been asked after him. Uh, thank you so much, JR, quickly for the five dollar just came up. So, have a good and safe week and a happy weekend. Hope you stay dry through all this wet weather. 
and we will see you in seven days time and it will be at 7 30 everywhere we won't stuff up again good night guys